नमस्ते एंड वेलकम बैक टू जावा स्क्रिप्ट सीरीज वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग विद आर डिस्कशन ऑन लूप्स एंड व्हाट वी नीड टू नाउ लर्न इज हाउ टू यूज लूप्स टू सॉल्व दीज डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ पैटर्न्स करेक्ट फॉर दैट आई वुड लाइक टू स्टार्ट विद द वेरी फर्स्ट एंड मोस्ट बेसिक पैटर्न फॉर टुडे एंड दैट पैटर्न लुक समथिंग लाइक दिस दिस इज द वेरी फर्स्ट पैटर्न आई वुड लाइक टू सॉल्व you can call this as a square you can call this as a rectangle but basically a square like pattern filled with asterisks right now what i would like to do is i would also like to just put a grid around this why i'm doing this is so that you can visualize a pattern as a collection of rows and a collection of columns and if you look clearly you will see i have five rows in every row i have five stars so if you can create a row which has five stars repeat that five times it becomes this pattern right anyways how do we do this let's explore first of all in javascript now i want you to ignore this complete pattern and focus on just one row imagine i want to write a program where i can just create five stars one next to the other like this one next to the other now here you will face an issue because the first thought that will come to most of your minds is i will just go and say console dot log and i will just print a star like this correct now the thing with console dot log star is even if i don't use a loop and if i just repeat this five times i still will not get my Uh, output because if you have understood the concept correctly you know that the property of console.log is after printing it will take cursor to the next line which means clearly this will not work so how what is the approach in which i can print five stars one next to the other right now everybody should understand the approach correctly okay look at the approach what i will do is instead of printing like this i'll not print a star at all instead what i will do is i will just be going here and i will tell uh, let row i'll create a variable called as row let us assume this is only that variable called as row and it is initially empty there is nothing inside okay now i want this row to be a string now you know in javascript which is a loosely typed programming language there is no data type which you can directly tell that this should be a string no that is dynamically decided by javascript and if you are directly watching this lecture i highly recommend you to follow the series from the first lecture because all of the concepts i will be continuously referring back to so if you follow my series completely i'm sure your clarity will be next level right either ways now what i will do is i'll come to the next line i will say row equal to and i will say double quotes like this if you attended my data types lectures you know this is an empty string double quotes is a string in javascript single quotes is also a string either one of which you can use i am using double quotes so it's a string it's an empty string and so what i'm trying to say so row is empty now what i will do is now what i will do is look carefully in the next line i will tell do one thing take the old value of row to that you please attach plus there is not addition attach what to attach one star understood same thing i am saying row plus star what is this tell me what is the old value of row empty empty string if i attach it with a star then this is called as concatenation it will come together and form a star yes that one star i want to give it back to row how will you give it back to row ah uh, that is where you have to use assignment because assignment is right to left associative what is on the right side i'm giving to the left side i'll say please give it back to row so how you must read this is take the old value of row attach a star and that attached value assign it back to row which means now row will have that star understand what i'm trying to say after which after which i will go here and then i will be printing the value of row if i do this if i do this watch this carefully let me just execute and show you if i were to execute this is the output you will get one star now let us assume i want the second star next to it so what are you going to do look carefully again i'll copy the same line paste it once more 
Now if I paste it once more, try to understand. Now what is the old value of rho? There is a star. So star plus star. If I concatenate, it becomes two stars. The two stars I'm assigning it to rho. Which means this time when I print rho, it is going to be two stars. One next to the other. I hope you're able to follow through what I'm saying. So now if in case I were to execute it, clearly you can see two stars. If you want three stars, then I think everybody can easily predict. I'll paste this once more. Right? In which case now it will become two stars plus one star, three stars, which is what I will assign. If I want four stars, I'll paste it once more, which is nothing but three plus one. Now it is four stars, which I will assign. Similarly, if I want once more, it is four stars plus one, five stars, which I will assign. Which means when these five statements execute, now when I print rho, rho is going to have five stars one next to the other. And if you need proof, I will just go here and if I execute it, you can see five stars one next to the other. That's it. Simple. Easy. Everybody understood what I'm trying to say? Great. Awesome. Yes? But of course, is this an efficient way of doing things? Definitely not. Because we are continuously repeating the same set of statements again and again. Now your knowledge of loops will help you. Right? Because you know, whenever a set of statements is repeating. See, this is repeating. Put it inside a loop. I hope you will understand. So now, instead of doing this multiple times, you can notice carefully, what I need to do is, once I need to initialize row to empty, then I need to repeat this five times. Correct or not? So whatever is repeating, instead of you writing it multiple times, we'll do one simple thing. I'll tell it only once. I'll cut it. And here I will go and I will create a for loop. Any loop you can use, okay? Inside that, I will paste whatever should be repeated. Now I will go here and you know, loop should have uh, three or four things. Initialization, condition, incrementation, decrementation, and body. Body we have given, I'm giving the rest, okay? Now watch it. Here I will just go and I will tell, uh, I should start from one, i less than equal to five because five times it should execute, i plus plus. Now some of you will be like, where is i Rohit? No problem. I will go here and I will just probably uh, create let i like this. I've created i. Understood? Now clearly you can notice, let me delete these extra lines. To print five stars one next to the other, I'm first initializing the row to empty. Then I'm attaching, you know, star by star, star by star, five stars. After attaching five stars to the row, I'm printing the row. This is the logic. So now if in case I were to go here and if I were to just execute this code, clearly you can see five stars. Correct or not? If you wanted 10 stars on the same line, I think it is very clear to everyone, make this as 10. If I were to go here, clear the screen and re-execute it, 10 stars. Correct? Now think about it. I'll go and make this back as five itself. Now I'm coming back to the expectation of what we wanted to print. What we wanted to print was this pattern. Now think logically, let me just execute whatever we've written now. If you want to print this pattern, don't you think you now know how to print five stars on the same line? If you know how to print five stars on the same line, don't you think this has to just get repeated five more times? And tell me, how are you getting this five stars? This is the code which is giving you the five stars. Which means if this set of statements could repeat five times, don't you think you'll get this pattern? As simple as that. Correct? Oh, you're absolutely right. Now immediately you will use your brains and you will be like, that's easy, Rohit. You do one thing, you copy this, you go here, second time you paste, third time you paste, fourth time you paste, fifth time you paste. Five times you paste, you can see. Awesome, right? Now if in case I were to go, I were to clear the screen and if in case I were to execute, 100% you got the pattern. Congratulations, please clap for yourself, all of you, okay? But that clap should feel like a slap because pattern you got, job you will never get. <laughs> Understood? Nobody is going to hire a programmer who's such a great personality who is just going to copy paste. Not happening. Yes? Which means anybody with eyes can see one more thing happening. See here, initialize row to empty, one for loop to attach stars to the row, then printing that entire row. This set of statements, this bunch of statements is repeating multiple times. And whenever something is repeating multiple times, I've told you, don't foolishly write again and again. 
Instead, you tell once, make JavaScript repeat it multiple times for you. How are we going to do it? It is quite simple. Just take all of these statements, cut it. Whenever you want to repeat something, the mind must immediately tell you to put it inside a loop like this. And let me just indent all of this correctly so that you can see it. Now some of you will be like, Rohit, can you take one loop and put it inside another loop? Can a loop be within another loop? Yes, my friend, absolutely possible. A loop inside a loop is called as nested loops. What is it called as? Nested loop. Nesting means one inside another. Possible, 100%. That is another type of loop, nested loops. While inside while, for inside for, while inside for. Yes, any type of loop inside any type of loop you can nest. Understood? Anyways, how many times do you want the statement to execute? Five times. Wonderful. So now I will go here. Again, I'll put two semicolons and I will tell I should start from one. I less than equal to five. I plus plus. Clear to clear? Now some of you will be like, even for this you are saying I, even for this you are saying I, don't you think name clash or confusion will happen? Yes, confusion will happen. Luckily, we have 26 alphabets in English, right? So there's no lack of alphabets. So what I'll do is I'll go here. This is called as the outer loop, the loop on the outside. This is called as the inner loop. To take care of outer loop, I'll have I. But to take care of inner loop, I'll use another alphabet, probably J. You can use any alphabet. I'm using J. Now you may ask, where is J? No problem. We'll create J. Let J. I hope, I hope all of you understood. Right? Now, please try to understand. This outer loop will ensure that five rows are getting printed. This inner loop will ensure that inside every row, five stars are getting printed. I hope you're able to understand. That's the fundamental logic of this, right? Now, if in case I were to go here, and if in case I were to just compile this code and execute it, you can see you got the pattern. One more way to look at it is, this is a five cross five matrix, five cross five, five rows, five columns. Six cross six if you want, do one thing. Just go here, I want six rows. In every row I want six columns, six cross six. That's it. Now if I go clear the screen, if I execute it, six cross six. Now that 10 cross 10, 50 cross 50. You can do whatever you want. In fact, ideally what I would like to do is, I'll go here and I will create one variable called as n, which is the n value, n cross n. N can be anything. Here I will say N is 8, like this. Now what I will do is, instead of telling 8 here, I will replace it with N. Because N is 8, automatically this will become 8. Similarly, I will come here, instead of telling 8, I will replace it with N. So you can see N rows, in every row N columns. N can be anything. You change it in one place, it will change it in all places. right? Now, if I were to come here, clear the screen, and if I were to execute 8 cross 8 matrix, as simple as that. So, I hope the fundamental pattern you have learned. Now, keeping this as a base pattern, I'm going to solve you, I'm going to solve multiple variations on the same, and I hope you enjoy it, and make sure to go back and practice.